Before we get into this special weekend edition of Just a Truth, let me talk with you a minute about Mike Lindell and My Pillow. You know how much I love this this company. And Mike Lindell, like he often does, is responding in a big way to those who've been affected by Hurricane Helene in the Carolinas. He is sending 50,000 pillows to the Carolinas. 50,000. That's why I support this great company. Once again, my pillow is canceled uh has been canceled by other box stores. This is why we need to continue to support them. And he has a great special for you right now. Support my pillow so he can help those affected by Hurricane Helene. The standard my pillow retails for 49.98. Now, for a limited time, you can receive one for only $14.98 when you use promo code JOEY and you go to MyPillow.com or call 800-893-4059. There's a limited number of these, only 10, uh, so do not miss out on this amazing deal while supplies last. Order now using promo code JOEY at 800-893-4058 or you can always order at MyPillow.com. In this special edition of Just the Truth, we're going to talk about people who are making a difference as they help people deal with the devastation and destruction of Hurricane Helene. We'll talk with Lieutenant Governor Pamela Evett. We'll talk with Major Mike Harris with the Salvation Army in Greenville. Alexa Newman and the special people at Carolina Pregnancy Center are gathering diapers and formula to take them to Western North Carolina. And a new company opening a manufacturing plant in 2025, Nissan Foods USA. They're sending 50,000 50, meals uh, to those affected in Hurricane Helene's path as well. Vice President of Communications Eric Grunison will join us as well. Let's get started. Welcome to Word on the Street with the Carolina Zone, Joey Hudson. Conversations with movers and shakers and stories and insights from local difference makers tailored just for the Carolinas. It's Word on the Street, powered by Ingalls Markets. Low prices, love the savings on News Talk 98.9 WORD, the voice of the Carolinas. Here's Joey Hudson. Welcome in. We have a special show for you this week. What a week we've had, haven't we, with the results of one week into the relief and recovery efforts of Hurricane Halim. Lieutenant Governor Pamela Evett joins us in just a moment uh, on an earlier conversation. I was able to catch up to talk about what the state is doing for our relief and recovery efforts and how the federal government will assist with that. Also, we'll check in with Major Mike Harrison with the Salvation Army. Alexa Newman with Carolina Pregnancy Centers will give us an update on how nonprofits are faring in wake of Hurricane Helene. And we'll check in with one of our new corporate citizens here in the upstate. Nissan Foods USA is building a new manufacturing facility. It'll be opening in August of 2025. Eric Grunison, their vice president of communications, talks about how this new company, even though they're not open, is chipping in to also help out with the relief efforts. On our guest line, Lieutenant Governor Pamela Evett. Wow, what a week we have had. Still a lot of work to do. Give us an update on where we are. Of course, President Joe Biden was in the upstate this week. Uh, are we getting what we need from the federal government? Um, you know, he he made some assurances to the governor that whatever we needed, he would provide. We'll see, you know, 30 days for all of our counties to get their assessments put together. We have a lot of, you know, when the governor declared a state of emergency, that opens up the triggers for um, the relief that we need. So we saw a list come out, the counties that have already been approved through FEMA for disaster relief. There are still more counties. If your county wasn't on there, please do not panic. You know, the counties that got theirs in first, the state's not sitting on anything. As soon as we get it, we're turning it in. And I think that's the assurances that the governor was looking for um, from the president is that, you know, we would not have pushback on sure. the counties who really need help. And so we're moving on with that. We have a lot of great people, Joey, helping, uh, volunteering, cutting down trees with their chainsaws, <laughs> trying to help crews. Please be careful. We've had a lot of destruction yeah. and uh, road crews working around the clock, whether it's SCDOT, our state guard, our South Carolina National Guard, cutting down trees. We have teams in from Louisiana, very skilled. You know, They get hit with hurricanes all the time. Uh, it's been an outpouring of love from across the country coming to, to help South Carolinians. Yeah, and it's bad, of course, what we're experiencing, but it's good to see that there is that, that spirit of 
helping one another. And you're just really seeing that. You know, I had a chance earlier this week to talk with Jared Spencer, who is mayor of Cowpens. And he said one of the things that has surprised him the most is how Cowpens is a small town. They don't have some of the resources that other cities have. He said, you know, our people just got out and went to work and they didn't expect somebody to come along and do this for them. You know, I think you you see that in the rural areas. You know, David and I, our family, we live here in Traveler's Rest. And when we woke up last Friday, we probably had upwards of 60 trees down on our property. And as David and the boys were getting our chainsaws ready to go out and see what we could do, you know, we heard chainsaws. We get to the end of our driveway and there is two Greenville County deputies who were trying to get through the road uh, to assess and and see people. And and there just happened to be a PRT ranger behind them who had some chainsaws and they were cutting trees. So you're right. You know, the boys, David, they jumped in. Uh, I'm more of a limb puller. I don't know if you should, if this lieutenant governor (laughs) should be wielding a chainsaw. I don't know if that's my forte, but I can pull limbs with the rest of them. But, you know, and and, and that's what we kind of saw is that spirit and only hear about the bad things, the people who are losing their temper, the people who are arguing with other people for every one person that's acting out. Yeah. There are 10 people doing something great. And I think that needs to be the message is you know, helping one another, helping our neighbor. And we know, hey, I got power on, you know, late yesterday. I'm sitting in it with everybody. I understand that it can get frustrating. I have a 95-year-old mom that lives with me. It can get frustrating and scary and you feel like you, but but we are still so blessed. You know, that's what I kept going back to. My family's safe. A tree didn't come through my house. This is not comfortable but we'll just look at the pictures of the devastation where people have lost their homes, their businesses, a loved one, yeah. their cars. I mean, their whole house wiped away. That brings it back into perspective, Joey. Like, this may not feel comfortable, but dear Lord, my family's safe. Yeah, that, you're right. That's the important thing. And and you're right, too. The, the bad behavior, that is just few and far in between. I mean, overall, people are just jumping in. I've just watched some of the relief efforts and like the group at the downtown airport who had people coming in with helicopters and airplanes and they were literally flying supplies into Western North Carolina into areas that could not be reached otherwise. We've had people literally from all, all over the country come to the Carolinas to help us. So uh, that, that, that's, that's been encouraging for sure. Now let's go back for a minute. Lieutenant Governor Pamela Abbott with me today. You mentioned the counties and that uh, there could be other counties added to the list. I've seen on social media, and you know how it is with social media. <laughs> you can't always rely, <laughs> but I've seen an, uh, some posts on social media talking about a certain county saying that, well, we our county waited too late and they're not going to be eligible now. Some counties will be added along the way, as I understand it, correct? That's absolutely true. All the counties have 30 days from the incident, right? The disaster yeah. incident. So I've been intentional about my posting. And that was one of the posts that I did uh, is please stop listening to Facebook. Yeah. Um, I have to remind my 95 year old mother that <laughs> Facebook is a new thing, right? And she uh, will tell yes. me all these things she hears and I'll say, mom, where did you hear that? And she'll say, oh, I read it on Facebook. And I'm like, okay, mom, remember. If you don't know, if you've heard this from your neighbor's cousin twice removed down the road, yeah. probably not true because right. that story has grown. And um, 30 days, th- th- This is these are the facts. Every county has 30 days from the date of the incident to submit all their things to the state. Yeah. The state then submits it to FEMA on the federal side, and then FEMA has to approve it. And that comes from each individual county. Yeah. Uh, if you have questions, please email them. Yeah. Be kind. I mean, they're working hard. Some counties have more resources than other counties and have bigger teams and, 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 and things that could get them around quicker to do these assessments. And please look to official sources for your information. Look right. to the governor's press conferences. Call SCEMD if you have service. Go out there and look at the reports. They're putting them out there regularly. Yep. Um, and let's all work together. Right. Because we'll get through this together. Yep. 
Good, good advice. And listen to News Talk 98.9 WRD, the voice of the Carolinas, because we're, <laughs> we are providing uh, information. You know, this is an instance to where you really see the importance of radio, uh, because we have, from, from day one, been talking about resources, where to go for things. And it's also a reminder to have an emergency kit and, and have a radio with batteries in it. <laughs> Joe, you're absolutely right. When you hear us on TV talking saying, get ready, you, you guys, I mean, I've been bragging about talk radio since I've been lieutenant governor, and you know, uh, you've been my talk radio friend for this, this the whole time. I know sometimes you think, oh, last time I heard this, nothing really happened. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? Isn't that the old adage? That's right. So when you hear these things, be very conscious of what's going to happen. Test those batteries. Get your flashlights out. Make sure you have some bottled water sitting around just in case hey, what's the worst thing that can happen? You have a flashlight with some good batteries and and your radio is set to go, right? Right. That's the worst thing that can happen in being prepared. Yep. Lieutenant Governor Pamela Evans, always a pleasure. You be safe out there and look, leave the chainsaws to David and the boys. Don't be messing with the chainsaws. (laughs) You are absolutely right, David. Anybody (laughs) needs somebody to pull limbs, I'm your girl. I can pull limbs with the best of them. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Always a pleasure. Be safe out there. God bless, Joe, and God bless all of you. Please take care and be Time. Sure thing. And just remember, you can go to 989WRD.com. 989WRD.com. We have a, a full list of all the resources, the nonprofits, the government agencies that you may need information uh, from as far as the relief effort, uh, where supplies are, where you can get help on certain things. So 989WRD. And portions of today's show made possible by Ingalls Markets. Let me share with you a special message from our partner at Ingalls. They have been hit hard as well. They wrote, Ingalls Markets is devastated by the catastrophic damage from Helene. Unprecedented destruction and tragic loss of life have touched every town, city, community, and business. Our hometown, Black Mountain, North Carolina, which houses our distribution center, was one of those areas. We had loss of power, critical infrastructure, transport vehicles, inventory, and yes, even loss of life. We were all severely impacted. Ingalls has stores in our region with significant damage and some stores still without power and water. We're working diligently to bring operations back online and begin helping our community. Ingalls is known for being there when hard times fall. It's part of our fabric to respond. We're making progress to come back online, and we want to thank you for your patience. To all of you and our beloved Western North Carolina Mountains, we love you. And this is just a time for us to rally around Ingalls as well. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. This is Word on the Street with Joey Hudson on News Talk 98.9 WORD, the voice of the Carolinas. This is Word on the Street with Joey Hudson, powered by Ingalls Markets. Low prices, love the savings on News Talk 98.9 WORD, the voice of the Carolinas. As the upstate communities are just trying to deal with the aftermath of Hurricane Helene, there's a lot of people who are hurting, a lot of people who need help. And of course, it's always great to live in a community where you have a lot of organizations out there who are doing just that. One of those being the Salvation Army of Greenville, Pickens, and Oconee Counties on our guest line today, Major Mike Harris. Uh, Good afternoon. How are you, sir? I am very well, thank you. How are you? I am wonderful uh, under the circumstances. So, boy, uh, what a week we've had, and I know you guys have just been springing into action. You do a great ministry every single day, but then when you add a storm response like this onto that, I know you've had a busy week. It's been, it's been a, quite, quite the week. Of course, it started out with, with the storm itself, which I think surprised all of us. I don't think anyone quite expected the level of carnage that we have. But uh, um, as you know, we have a a couple of shelters here, men's shelter, women and children's shelter. We enlarged that to uh, kind of an inclement weather shelter while the storms came through, so we were able to house quite a few more people. But since then, it's been a case of working with uh, the local uh, EOC, which is the Emergency Operations Centre, uh, with our, our local nonprofits and partners, uh, in trying to basically serve this community, which, by the way, uh, is exceptionally generous. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, I've lived here my entire life, Major, and I know that you uh, have been here, what, just over a year or so now? Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. And so, did I know that in just over a year, I'd hit, hit the biggest disaster that the area's seen. <laughs> <laughs> so so over the years, uh, having, having lived here my entire life, I've seen how our community can respond. And, you know, it's uh, surprising, but yet it's not surprising either. I had a chance uh, yesterday to speak with uh, the mayor of Cowpens, Jared Spencer. And Cowpens, of course, is a small area. And he said, you know, we don't have the resources that bigger towns and cities have. He said, but what we do have are neighbors who take care of neighbors. And he said it's just been uh, just astounded him at how quickly people have jumped in to move trees and do whatever they needed to do to open their little town back up. Absolutely. We, we like many, you know, our neighborhood was we were totally blocked in when it first occurred and, and people got out with chains and made a way, which has been invaluable to us because for some reason, the Salvation Army's area command uh, a men's shelter and the, the dining room never lost power. We were amongst that, what, what 5% that didn't, wow. thankfully. Our women and children's shelter is still without, unfortunately. That, that's yeah. a struggle, but but we have the dining room they can be comfortable in. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, just to watch the community come together and make a way. With me today, Major Mike Harris with the Salvation Army in uh, Greenville. So give us that 30,000-foot view, if you would, of, of what the, how the storm has changed what you're doing this week and what your response has been. We've certainly changed, changed our week. Everything I had planned has gone out the window. Uh, every day we, we have uh, some meetings. So I start at 8.30 where the United Way kind of bring together all the um, some of the nonprofits, the partner agencies, if you will. Uh, we, they, we, they and we have representatives. We start with a meeting. Okay, these are the needs of the community. Who can help with this? It's well coordinated. Yeah. Uh, our big role has been on the feeding side of things, and 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 one of the things I've enjoyed is at the EOC, where you have um, you have obviously the, the county there, the United Way represented, uh, Live Well, who are an agency I'm, I'm starting to get to know a lot better now, mm-hmm. uh, and ourselves have, have figured out. Okay, we need to find people who are shut in that, that nobody knows that they're there. And they've done a terrific job of identifying those folk. We can prepare the meals, live well, we'll then deliver them to the individual homes. And then on top of that, we're going out every day with our mobile feeding unit. And we're basically identifying areas where, where there is no service, as in electric service, as well as other nonprofits, and going in and feeding folk. And we're feeding up to 500 meals every day from our mobile, mobile feeding unit. So that's the ongoing service that we, c- we continue to do to this day. Wow. F- 500 meals that you have prepared there on your campus. Yeah, actually last night we had a bit of fun. We took out a grill. I went to a neighborhood and just grilled out. People came out at a wonderful time with all the all the families, the children. It was just 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 it was nice just to be there. And and folk are so grateful. That's not what we do it for. We do it because it's the right thing to do. But I tell you people have been very grateful and again it just it just reminds me that this is a very special place. Sure. Major Harris with me today from the Salvation Army. Our listeners, they want to know how they can help. And that may mean a volunteer time. That may mean just making some donations, uh, you know, writing a check. Talk with us about the needs that, that you have and how our listeners, if, if someone listening today wants to do their part, how they can help out. So it's an interesting phase we're hitting right now because you're getting to that point where people are getting their power back. And that changes. To, when, the, when the grocery stores have got food and people have got power, there is a relative normalcy that, that, that comes with that. So at this stage of the game, there are two things that we that we will need. Of course, we'll always say cash, not just because we want cash. We can do whatever we need with cash. Sure. Anything. Totally flexible, totally pliable. The other thing that we're getting ready for now is the next phase, and that is some of the recovery elements. And for us, what we can do is provide clothing and household items to our family or thrift stores. So actually, if people could simply go through their closets, find the sort of clothes that they don't need and just give them to one of our thrift stores. And please understand that what we do there is we give vouchers to people to go to those stores to get stuff for free. So although it's a store, and yes, we will put it on the floor, we could have a lot of people coming in that are going to get free stuff, and we just need to restock uh, and able to do that. So any of our thrift stores, whether it be on East North Street in Greenville, uh, on Wade Campton Boulevard in, in Taylor's, Old Greenville Highway in Clemson, uh, Bypass Highway in Seneca, I've thrown those out very quickly. But any of those places will take clothing, and trust me, they'll be getting very busy soon with people with these vouchers, getting free clothes, because it's surprising how many have lost their stuff yeah. uh, in, in the storm, when it's got soaked, when it's been blown away. It can be any number of reasons. So that's, that's a, big, a big thing 
coaching as well. That surprises me. I had not even thought about that, but you're right. I mean, a lot of people, uh, particularly whose homes uh, may have been uh, damaged or destroyed, they could have very well lost their clothes. So that's something that we all can do. Look, my closet needs to be cleaned out. So you've given me a project. I'm not sure I want to tell my <laughs> wife, Peg, about this now because uh, <laughs> uh, because she, she, she's been wanting me to clean my closet out anyway. But, uh, but, but, but that's something anybody can do, isn't it? It, it really is. And, and at the end of the day, and I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody, and, and men are the worst. You know, we just hold on to things, hold on to things. But at the end of the day, I've got, I've got a, a drawer full of things. I can probably say I wear about a third of what's in that drawer. I could easily get rid of two thirds. So I'm going to do it myself uh, and just clean that out. And it is quite an easy thing to do. And we always feel better when we've got a bit more closet space. And boy, it could be used uh, at a time such as this. Sure. Major Mike Harris is with me today. We're talking about the Greenville, uh, about the Salvation Army, uh, which serves Greenville, Pickens, Oconee counties. Of course, there are other, uh, you can talk with other groups around the, the state, uh, Salvation Armies that uh, that cover different areas. Uh, Major Harris, let's talk uh, for a minute, too. Uh, you mentioned cash because it does take money to, to run uh, your organization. If someone wants to donate, what's the easiest way to do that? Um, well, a couple of things you can do uh, because this is a disaster. So this, this money uh, will ultimately serve the disaster. Uh, so there is a, a sort of, if you will, a nationwide disaster fund that's been set up. And, then, and the easiest way to access it is to simply go to the website, which is disaster.salvationarmy.org. So again, that's disaster.salvationarmy.org. Failing that, if you want to drop a check off at the Salvation Army, we're on uh, 501 Rutherford Street, so we'll be happy to take it. And just put on the memo, it's for the disaster, because we want to make it clear, everything that's given for the disaster is used on the disaster. Every penny. Yeah, well, that's easy enough. Disaster.salvationarmy.org. And, of course, you can also uh, uh, come by or call the the Greenville office if you'd like to volunteer, because uh, they can always use volunteers as well. Uh, Major Mike Harris, it's always a pleasure. Again, appreciate what you guys do in our community. Be safe out there, and just know that you got a large community praying for you and supporting you. Joey, thank you very much, and thank you, everybody, for for, for all the support and help you've given to your community through the Salvation Army. God bless you. Sure thing. This is Word on the Street with Joey Hudson on News Talk 98.9 WORD, the voice of the Carolinas. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY. That's 864-477-5639. Email's always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. This is Word on the Street with Joey Hudson, powered by Ingalls Markets. Low prices, love the savings on News Talk 98.9 WORD, the voice of the Carolinas. This year, I really thought I was going to have to boycott the holidays. I was going to lock myself away and not come out until 2025. But after finding PhD weight loss, you can bet I'll be at every holiday party I'm invited to. That's because PhD Weight Loss helped me take control with great confidence, support, and my new healthy body. The best part? PhD Weight Loss did it all without harmful drugs that keep you dependent on them to maintain your weight loss. It's a natural, medication-free approach to weight loss crafted to naturally diminish food-related thoughts, hunger, and cravings, making your weight loss journey more sustainable and enjoyable. Take it from me, I lost 33 pounds. The PhD Weight Loss Program teaches you not just what to eat and when, but also how to think differently about food and finally let go of those cravings and get rid of the hunger naturally. Don't lock yourself away this holiday season. Call PhD Weight Loss today at 864-644-1900. That's 864-644-1900. Carolina Pregnancy Center is an independent faith-based nonprofit organization funded entirely through private donations. They receive no uh, government funding. They have a mission to help women and families with pregnancy-related issues. And the best part is they also recognize the importance of sharing Christ with everyone who walks in the door. Joining me, a dear friend and the lady who keeps things going at CPC, Alexa Newman. How are you? We are good. How are you? It's so great to talk to you. Always a pleasure. Now, first, please tell me that your big, beautiful new office was not damaged in this storm. Not at all. Not at all. We were so blessed. We still don't have power, but everything's intact. There was not a problem at all. We're so grateful. Yeah. So talk with me a bit. Of course, we're all struggling with that. Uh, people throughout the, the upstate of South Carolina, Western North Carolina, some parts of Georgia, uh, not having utility service. Talk with us about how you've managed to continue to serve the, the many people who depend on you. 
Well, we have not been able to see clients in the office this week because we don't have electricity there, but we were able to then we got a call from um, a pregnancy center up near Asheville that needed diapers and wipes and formula, and so we were able to pack up a, a huge amount of things and send up there, and then we got a call the next day, and so we sent literally a truck load of stuff, things that were needed up there, and we'll probably do that again next week. Our community has been so good to us that we had a, a great surplus. Usually when we have a big surplus, we know that the Lord's getting ready to do something, and so we, there was a church in Spartanburg today that serves the inner city and and Alden said, our clients really, our people can't really get to y'all. Could we come and get some diapers to give out to our moms? And we said, absolutely. So this afternoon, we were, our staff came in and we packed up diapers and formula for our Earn While You Learn clients, our mentoring moms that are being mentored. And so they'll be able to pick those things up tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, but we just, we want to help the community. Yep. When you were talking about having a surplus, knowing that the Lord was about to present something to you, the old saying, the Lord works in mysterious ways, I think that applies for this, does it not? It does, and we um, we had a, we had were getting low on certain sizes, and um, Eric that works for us said, oh, I think those sizes over at Cud Memorial Baptist Church, they're kind enough to let us store some stuff there, and he came back with his van loaded down and it was exactly what we needed so um you can never outgive him you are are, you just can't outgive him yep yep (laughs) serve and to reach out and to love people with the love of christ sure sure on our guest line today alexa newman with carolina pregnancy center before we get uh, too much further along here Alexa, talk with us about what you do at Carolina Pregnancy Center, and and just assume that there are people listening today who are not familiar with your ministry, uh, and and give them that elevator speech. Oh, yeah. We we are a crisis pregnancy center. We um, help uh, families. When I came to work there 35 years ago, we mainly just helped women, but now we help families. And we have a male on staff that, uh, and male volunteers that will work with, um, the dads that come in. Uh, we have, we do free pregnancy testing. We do everything we do yeah. is free. Um, we also do free ultrasounds. We have, we're partnering with Middle Tiger, uh, over in Lyman to offer, um, counseling, professional counseling for um, maybe some situations that are above our pay grade, uh, which has been great to have that opportunity. In this new office, we have room to do that. Um, We do post-abortion counseling for men and women. Uh, We have a mentoring program for dads and moms. We have a little store on our campus where they can buy diapers and formula and clothes and car seats, um, baby beds, anything that a baby would need. Yeah. Um, and it's a it's an educational program where we have classes um, every Tuesday for the moms and dads to take um, on nutrition. We do cooking classes, um, just, you know, basic baby care. Um, anything that a mom or a dad would need uh, for a new baby. And then um, we even, um, lessons on discipline and anger management and, you know, all those things that you need as a parent. Um, We work hand-in-hand with local churches to get our um, folks into a church where they can be loved and where they can sit under preaching and they'll grow in their faith so it's just you know we're we like to think of ourselves as a total package um we just want people to know the just it's so special to have a baby and maybe they feel like that they can't make it they don't know what to do and and 
but we want to stand there and say there's hope and there's a way and we'll walk with you. We're uh, we're going to help you as long as you let us help you. Uh, and for additional information, uh, you can go to their website, carolinapregnancy.org, carolinapregnancy.org, and, and see what this organization is all about. Uh, in our final minute or so together, Alexa, talk with our listeners about what they can do to, to help you uh, in, in this in this uh, challenging time, I guess you could say. Well, we would uh, we love to get diapers of all sizes and pull ups um, and any kind of formula that you can give. Um, I sent a, a can of new tramogen, which is a very expensive um, formula, and found out that um, one of the families that was the kind that they needed and they didn't just didn't think that they would be able to get it so any kind of formula why you know all gift cards so that we can buy things that the girls put on their wish list that they need um just you know we're a we love to have people come and help us or if it, you have an expertise and you'd like to teach a class we would love to have people come and teach classes a cooking class or crocheting or how to read to a young child. Um, we want to equip these men and women to be the very best parents that they can be. Sure, sure. Well, I think the, the, the thing is you can always find something for someone to do. If they have the time, if they have money or, or whatever, there's always a need that they can help fill uh, at Carolina Pregnancy Center. Alexa Newman, I just always uh, I'm amazed at the work that you and your organization do in our community. I applaud you for that and just hope that uh, things that you get through and, and this this tough time like all of us. And, and thank you for helping sending diapers and formula to, to the families who need it in Western North Carolina as they were hit even harder than, than we. That's just being a good neighbor. That's what Christ would expect from all of us. So thank you for doing that as well. Always a pleasure. Appreciate your time today. Thank you. I always love to uh, brag on the Lord and what he's doing at CPC. Up next, Nissan Food USA is not even open in the upstate yet, but giving back in a big way. This is Word on the Street with Joey Hudson on News Talk 98.9 WORD, the voice of the Carolinas. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY. That's 864-477-5639. Emails always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Now back to Word on the Street with Joey Hudson on News Talk 98.9 WORD, the voice of the Carolinas. Founded in 1958, Nissan Foods USA revolutionized the food industry by creating a product that could be packaged, prepared, and served all in one. You may recognize some of their brands as they offer a wide range of convenient and delicious meals, including cup noodles, top ramen, and hot and spicy firewalk. The good news for upstate South Carolina... Nissan Foods will be opening a new manufacturing facility in August of 2025. It's a $228 million investment, creating hundreds of jobs for residents in the upstate. Although Nissan Foods is not operating yet, they're already demonstrating what a good corporate citizen they will be as they are donating 50,000 plus servings of food to support those in need because of Hurricane Helene's devastation. On our guest line today, Vice President of Communications, Eric Grunison. Eric, welcome. How are you? Well, I'm doing well. I mean, all things considered. I'm glad to be talking to you today, Joey, but i got to say, I wish I was talking to you in much better circumstances because the devastation that is in the aftermath of Hurricane Helene, I mean, it's, it's jarring. So, you know, I'm glad to be talking with you, but like I said, I would much rather – be talking to you as we are cutting the ribbon, opening up our uh, manufacturing facility that's coming in August of 25. But we'll talk then. But in the meantime, Joey, I just want to say thank you to the entire Greenville community. You have been so welcoming to Nissan Foods, and we're really looking forward to being a part of the community. And with that, Nissan Foods truly believes in being a good neighbor and supporting our communities. And the moment at which it became very apparent of the devastation of Hurricane Helene here in Greenville, as well as the Western Carolina region. We knew we needed help, and we started a 
email chain on a Saturday, and Tuesday morning there was a tractor trailer sitting outside the Ring of Fire media agency with 60 pallets of top ramen on it, and we've been going nonstop handing them out around the community, taking them to the Greenville Airport to get them on uh, planes and helicopters to get them up as well to the uh, folks in Asheville. Yep, Uh, and and I I was going to say, welcome uh to south carolina but uh we'll we'll do the big welcoming at a later date how's that because i I agree with you i wish it were under different circumstances that you and i were speaking today but kudos to you for jumping in and to nissen foods for recognizing the need here and you guys aren't even really in our community yet but jumping in and playing a big role in the recovery effort well it is, I, I got to say, it, it's not just myself. It's our entire team at Nissan Foods USA, USA as well as our uh, holding company, Nissan Foods uh, in Japan. Our founder, Momofuku Ando, had a quote that said, peace will come to the world when the people have enough noodles to eat. Wow. And I thought to myself, yeah. you know, that is not motivation to, to come and to make sure that we're a part of the community. I mean, our community, our neighbors needed our help. And we're here, and we are just we just want to say that we're here for Greenville. We appreciate everybody in Greenville for welcoming us, and you know, like we said, we're happy to help. But we look forward to celebrating and and brighter days in the future. We, I mean, again, all we want to do is just say we're here for Greenville, and we appreciate Greenville. We're here for the Western Carolina region. We're here for everybody. Yeah, so we're all about community and family. Yep. On our guest line today, Eric Grunison with Nissan Foods USA. Eric, take a minute and just introduce Nissan Foods to the upstate of South Carolina, Western North Carolina. Talk about, give me your elevator speech on what you guys do. Nissan Foods USA, we manufacture top ramen and cup noodles. I guarantee that every single one of your listeners have our product in their pantry and we thank every single person who has them. We were founded by Momofuku Ando, uh, our founder. He is an amazing man. He did so many great things in the world and his legacy has lived on in all of the employees at Nissan Foods USA as we truly believe in taking care of our neighbors. And that's, I guess you could say the main reason why we wanted to come is because our neighbors in Greenville needed us. Yep. Yeah. What can you share with us? And it's very exciting news that you guys have have chosen our area uh, to build a new manufacturing uh, facility, again, opening sometime uh, later in 2025. What can you share with us about your new manufacturing facility and and the jobs that will be offered? We're going to be employing over 400 people. It is going to be a state-of-the-art facility. It's going to be noodle time here in Greenville. It's going to be over 400 jobs we uh, have just began the recruitment process if you're interested in learning more you go to nissenfoods.com go to our career page you'll see information about some of the careers we're going to be hiring here in greenville like it's just starting that process and it will be ramping up in the months to come and nissen foods offers an amazing benefits package we're a great company to work for i've worked for other companies in my life and i'll tell you what nissen foods an awesome place to work Will this particular facility uh, serve a particular region like the southeast? How many fa- other manufacturing facilities do you have? We have two other manufacturing facilities. We have one in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, as well as Gardena, California. So, yeah, we will be serving the southeast region. As you know, when we looked and saw a need in this region for an increase in manufacturing, and Greenville is an awesome city. We loved everything about it, and we're just excited to be here. So let's get back to, to our conversation uh, today. Obviously, a lot of people hurting in the Carolinas. Th- this storm that blew through just over a week or so now really did a lot of damage. A lot of people are hurting. You guys have stepped up. I mean, 50,000-plus mills. Uh, that, that's, that is huge. Thank you, Eric. Well, thank you, but I want to say again, we're just we're glad we could help. But we look forward to celebrating much brighter days with everybody in Greenville, the Western Carolina region. We're happy to that we were able to help. But to be fully honest with you, I wish we didn't have to help. Sure. You know, we never would have come ashore and it would have never happened. But unfortunately, it did happen. And we're here for our neighbors. So we're happy to be able to help. 
And we look forward to brighter days of celebration and talking to you and being a part of the community. Brighter days are ahead. Yep, absolutely they are. And I got to say, you could not have partnered with a better group than Ringo Fire, Brian Stearns, and his team over there. Uh, They they do talk about serving the community. They do a lot in upstate South Carolina. and, And so you picked a good partner there. You are absolutely right with that. Brian, Carissa, Marnie, the entire team, absolute rock stars. This drive started with a phone call from Brian and I on a Saturday, and he's like, we need help. It's going to sort this. I kind of had a panic inside. I'm like, oh, gosh, <laughs> we've got this process going. What's it going to look like? What are we going to do? I assured Brian and his crew, they're like, well, we got this. Tuesday morning, one of his guys is on a forklift. We're unloading it. We're pallet jacking it. We're storing their facility. I'm like, okay, great. Now there's 60 pallets of noodles here. What do we do? Ryan's like, got it lined up. Got this relationship in place. Got this relationship in place. We're going here. We're going there. And in 48 hours, we're down to six pallets left. And those are going to be gone by the end of the day. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, Brian and his team, they know everybody in the upstate. So when you want to network, uh, they can certainly do that for you. Uh, Eric Grunison, it was a pleasure talking with you. And and I, too, I share the the idea that I wish it had been in different circumstances. But, hey, we're going to have plenty of time moving forward when we can do a proper introduction of Nissen Foods. And and I look forward to being in a ribbon cutting in in a couple of years. Absolutely. We're going to be there. I guess at August 2025, we open. If you're interested in joining the Nissen family, I really encourage you to do that. NissenFoods.com. Go to our career page. There's a section on there about Greenville. And we would love for everybody to join the team and know that if you are listening to this right now and something comes up in your life and you're like, I need some help, hit us up at Nissen Foods. We're here for our community. Thank you. Be safe out there, and we'll talk again soon. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Sure thing. That's it for this week's Word on the Street. Remember, 989WRD.com is your source of all the information concerning relief efforts for Hurricane Helene. Be sure and jump in and help out some of the organizations we talked to today. And I love the idea of the Salvation Army. Just clean your closet out. That's something we all need to do, isn't it? (laughs) And take it to a Salvation Army thrift store. If you missed parts of today's show, be sure and go back and listen on the podcast. Just search for Joey Hudson, Just the Truth on the Odyssey app or wherever you listen to your podcast. You can also subscribe at my website, joeyhudson.com. And if you need to stock up on some of those things that maybe you're running short on because of the storm, head by your local Ingalls Market. You'll find a full selection of gourmet cheeses, sliced to order deli meats, fresh sandwiches, homemade soups, and party platters for any occasion. Ingalls, low prices, Love the savings. This is Word on the Street with Joey Hudson on News Talk 98.9 WORD, the voice of the Carolinas.